What's going on, YouTube? Welcome to the Everything Paranormal Show. I'm your host, Josh Morris. Okay, so we got a big show. We're going to be talking about tips and tricks and a lot of things that if you are just getting into ghost hunting or you're thinking about it, or maybe you have started it, but you haven't progressed very far, or even if you're advanced, maybe, maybe you're going to gain, I don't want to say maybe, just stick around. Because maybe you'll enjoy the humor. But I definitely want you guys to um, enjoy the show. It's a lot to cover. It's tips, tricks. Like I'm going to be showing off tons of gear, um, different things, like advice. It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, so with that being said, <laughs> welcome to the show, guys. Hey, I know I was a little spastic at the beginning. But, guys, I'm standing up for a reason today because – and you can see – like my ceiling back here, my camera's raised up. Uh, again, we're going to be doing some show and tell. Um, so we, I want to cover just a lot of things, like I said. Um, but while we're waiting for people to kind of filter in, and I apologize if I don't see your comments. I'm going to move. Them, I'm going to move you guys over to my center screen here, so I can maybe hopefully see the comments better. Um, but as I let some people trickle in. Guys, come on in, and while we're waiting, just for this little bit, because I, I got a lot to cover, so we're going to get into things, but just as a disclaimer when you watch this, because this is live, so who knows what I'm going to say, but keep in mind, everything I show you is not the best of the best. It's not going to be like, this is the golden rule. You have to use this, or you have to use that. I'll specify if I feel like that. But what I'm saying is there's options out there. I just want to show you my options. I want to show you the options that my wife and I found, the things that's been working for us, the things that may or may not work for us. I just want to share with you some of the tips and tricks that I've, I've been learning and things over the time, things you're going to want to have, things you may already have, who knows. But just like I said, there's always going to be suggestions. I may go through everything today and you guys might go, well, Josh, you forgot about this or you forgot about that. Hey, put it in the comments below to help other people. I appreciate that. Or even myself. Again, this isn't this isn't meant to be like Josh knows everything and hears everything. No, trust me. I'm still learning a ton of things um, when it comes to like cinematography and all this different stuff. There's all kinds of things. But I'm going to share with, with some things with you guys today. Uh, so looks like my wife's in the chat. Hey, honey. Uh, Bob's in the chat. Bob, what's up, Bob? <laughs> he says, sup, dude? Uh, yeah, so, Bob, this is your kind of show. This is right up your alley. We're going to be talking about gear and, and all just all kinds of things. So let's start getting into things because I just, I'm tired of saying things. Let's get going. <laughs> okay, so if you're a paranormal, let's, and, and I'm just going to assume that I'm going to address you guys as if, maybe you're somewhat new to ghost hunting. So again, if you're experienced, don't take offense. Um, but this, this video is going to be geared more towards your entry level and even maybe current somewhat newer level. Um, but, and then you guys in the chat, if you are experienced, you feel free to add things in there also, because you know how we are and this. And if I dip off camera every once in a while, whatever. <laughs> This we're winging. I got a ton of stuff around me, and oh my god, I'm telling you, there's a bunch of stuff around me, and I'm gonna have to put things up. But I didn't want to just set stuff on top of things and you know make a total, total crazy mess. So let me, um, and also if I do like this, that means I'm uh checking your comments. Because it's hard to read them from up here. Okay. So they're just saying hi and all that good stuff. So, all right. So when you're starting out with a team, uh, whether it's yourself or whether it's a team, you want to have some basic, basic gear. And so people might say, well, Josh, what should I start out with? And in all honesty, really just like your best piece of gear is going to be your cell phone. You know, get yourself a, a decent cell phone. This is an iPhone 12. And, and again, I got the iPhone 12 because of the cameras on here. 
um, to make sure I had, you can film short videos with this or short movies with this uh, features and stuff. So get yourself good, uh, just a good phone and you can record video. You can do um, EVP recordings from it. Um, the, it's just a good starting point. And then the next thing I would say is probably a flashlight because you operate in the dark a lot. So, um, so I guess maybe one of the cool things to start out with is I'm going to work my way towards cameras last uh, in, in shooting video and shooting photography and those type of things that as it relates to ghost hunting. Uh, I'm going to save that for last or, or toward the end. I don't know, but let's, let's kind of work our way through some things. So first off, I want to just start out with some different lighting. So, and remember, again, if I don't remember some of the names of these things, don't panic. Um, just look it up. <laughs> You're going to have to. I'm not putting links to all this below. Sorry. I, I know I might get some thumbs down for that. Please like this video and share and subscribe. We're trying to grow, folks. Um, I'm close to a 1,000 subs. You know, we really work hard at trying to, you know, give you guys honest content, meaningful Okay, so the first thing up, as I would say right here, this is my, you know what, we need, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adjust something, well, hold on, talk amongst yourself. Now, I want to adjust some light in here, I should have thought of this earlier, but... There, hopefully that's not going to wash out too much. I don't know. But I'm trying to get some lighting where you guys can see these type of things. So this here is a, a Sofern, S-O-F-I-R-N. But this flashlight is really awesome. Now, I would recommend that you look into like uh, uh, a company called Olight. Olight makes amazing flashlights. Um, my wife and I have gotten addicted. My wife found them. And like I said, I'm going to be giving my wife some credit throughout here. So don't get sick of it, <laughs> you all, uh, because she's also one that does a lot of research and discovers things. But this light here, it's got some different settings. And this thing here, I believe, goes up to like 1,300 lumens. Very, very uh, powerful. Um, it's got... It, it, this one has like four levels on it. So as far as like a, a flashlight, it's also got the little clip. You can clip it on the on the bill of your hat. It's got a little lanyard if you need to hang it somewhere. Um, again, very, very handy. This is my working light. In other words, this is the one that I use when I'm filming. When you guys see me filming and I've got a flashlight and I've got my camera in my hand, this is what I'm using right here. Now, again... This is, has been working really, really well, but when this starts going bad, I'm probably going to go to Olight. All right. So for flashlights, that's, that's cool. Okay. Find yourself something that can at least get anywhere from 800 to 1300 lumens or 1600 lumens. Somewhere in that 1600 is really bright. You're going to light up some, some stuff with the 1300, but remember, you can start getting pretty warm also when you get start getting up around that 1600s. So keep that in mind. Okay. So yes, Olight is awesome, honey. Uh, okay. A lantern. Okay. This here. Now let me know if you, if, if you guys can't always see these things. This here is a lantern. This is Ozark trail and this is from Walmart. Okay. I don't, I don't like to always promote Walmart, but it's got, uh, high and low and off. Now, what's awesome about this is I got this, this takes D batteries and I got this, I got this all the way back when I first started, uh, when you guys saw me go to my first or some of my first um, full uh, in the field type stuff, like the Eaton House, Blue Mist Road, things like that. I have not changed the batteries. This thing lasts so long. And you can just sit there and put it in your base camp and just turn it on. And this thing will give you light if you have no power. This thing is awesome. I'm telling you, you need a lantern. So when you have your base camp or you want to light up a room just to, you know, whatever. So there you go. 
Ozark Trail. And the thing is, this was only like 15 bucks or something like that. Very, very cost effective. See, that's the other thing. I like things that we can afford. That flashlight that we showed you that it's like 1300 lumens, that sulfur light or whatever, that wasn't very expensive either. Old lights can get a little pricey. So, so if you're looking for like an alternative to like a, a, a expensive flashlight, that sulfur has been really good. Um, okay. Now we're going to move on to um, special lighting. Again, you can use whatever flashlight and lanterns. So special lighting. Now you can get different attachments for your camera. All right. You can get IR attachments, which is infrared, or you can even get infrared flashlights. So you can see right there, the camera is picking this up. But when I look at it, I just see like a little red dot. But you can see the cameras, uh, the webcam is picking this up. But infrared lighting, this here, you can set down in a room. You can use a flashlight if you're filming uh, in, in conjunction with IR. Or again, you can get a little attachment that might fit on your camera and provide IR. Now, the one we have is made by Polaroid. It's a little square cube that provides IR. I'm not real happy with that one because it doesn't hold a good charge. It really doesn't. So, but this, this, this flashlight here, uh, let's see. It's really kind of a known brand thing. Just type in IR lights. And when you see one that looks like this, <laughs> you know, that's pretty much going to be it. And it doesn't cost much and it's got little side uh, flat spots. So you can actually mount this to um, cameras. And it's, it's a little heavy, but again, I have a little string that I had on it and I actually hung it in one of the rooms I was in and to provide that extra IR light when we, I was in pitch darkness. Um, also another special light that I want to show you guys is the grid light. So now there's all kinds of fancy grid lights out there that are really expensive. But if you're just looking for some basic entry level stuff, this just says laser, <laughs> laser 303. And it's got a little key back here. See the key? And you can take out the key if you want. A lot of times we just leave the key in, but you can unlock it. And I don't know if this is going to show up because it's green. Unfortunately, it's green on green screen. So, yeah, you're not going to see. You can kind of see it on the ceiling. But anyways, so here's the thing about this. This button, you just press and it works. That's it. And then you have to let off or it, it turns off. So the bad thing is if you want to set this down and have continuous uh, laser grid, you will have to take a, a rubber band and just rubber band that down. Or in my case, I found like a piece of a shoelace and tied it down <laughs> uh, during one of the investigations. But now the cool thing is this has a rechargeable battery. It's um, one of those, and it's the same as my flashlight actually, they use the same charger. So right here, it's one of those rechargeable, the, the um, 18, what is it, 18650s. So really cool. Um, and this, this, the battery life on this, it's okay. Like it, it's okay. If you just want to do a quick, you know, like a grid thing for just a little bit of time. I don't know. It won't even turn on. I might've put the battery in backwards. Did you guys, did I put in the battery backwards? I might've, I don't know. I'm not worried about it. Okay. Uh, yes. The light is awesome. All right. So you guys are pretty, pretty, uh, good audience. Oh, and there's adjustments to your light. Also, you're like laser grids. Okay, now that's kind of the special lighting that I have. Now, remember, there's like other stuff. Again, you guys can go with whatever you want. I'm just showing you what I've got and and what I've accumulated. And a lot of it's also based on price, too, because, you know, I'm not made of money. And some of you that are out there ghost hunting, you're probably not made of money either. So look for these things. They'll get you in the door, it, it, like a cheap grid light, things that you see on TV or, or see on YouTube or other, you see other people using them in their videos. And you're like, man, I wish I could have a grid. I wish I could do this. I wish I could do that. Well, you'll be surprised. Some of this stuff is cheaper or does work, uh, may not work as well or do certain functions, but it still works. Okay. Now I want to move into a little bit of lighting for cameras. 
I'm not going to get too deep into camera lighting, but because we are talking about lighting, I want to stay in that subject. So this here is a, I love this little light. This was one of my first uh, camera lights right here. Now this is LED, but what I love about this, and I don't know, again, it's, there's no name brand on it. The, again, this is like 20, 30 bucks and it's LED. Okay. But what's so cool is you actually have like a, a case, a magnetic case diffuser. And it's not a, a major diffuser, but also you can flip it around and you can actually use it as a warm light. So if you want it like a more of a warm color, right? And what I really like about this one, and this for this is a great value if you can find this thing, um, because it's it's got a good brightness for for like walking through doing paranormal. But also, if you look at the back, it takes four double A's. Or if you look, there's a rechargeable battery in there. That's pretty wild. But I, I use the rechargeable battery all the time, and this thing. It holds a really good uh, battery life. I mean, this, I haven't charged this up. I went and did a bunch of filming, like 12 hours of filming uh, when I uh, just recently. And again, it's still super bright and it's got a dial up top. I'm sorry, a dial on the side that you can turn it, you know, down bright, super bright. You can just turn, turn up your brightness. Awesome. Great value. So, guys, if you are in this, and also it's got the cold shoe mount. So, if you guys are looking for an awesome um, LED light to go film and you don't want to break the bank, look up this thing. Remember, it's got the kind of like an amber back, the, the amber color, like the warm light cover. It's got the clear front. It's got a rechargeable battery. But this thing is awesome. Um, I really do like this. It's I, I kept thinking I wanted something more and more fancy, and I keep I keep using this. So um, here's another beast, and this is a lot bigger. <laughs> this thing is awesome. I've seen a bunch of uh, YouTubers use it. Um, I don't. I left the battery in the other room, so I'm not going to turn this on. But again, it's got a diffuser panel. You can um, remove. It's a magnet. So the only bad thing about the magnet thing, obviously, if you get kind of doing some paranormal, maybe you get in some woods or something, and be careful if you hit any branches. This could easily get knocked off. I've I've had this knocked off, and I didn't realize it. Um, I think it was during one of the yeah one of the when I was in the haunted mansion, it, and it fell off in the grass, uh, and I didn't notice it for a while. And then I, I was like, oh man! So just be careful of that magnet. But it's got a screen in the back. You can dial up your brightness. You can change to a warm. Uh, it's not RGB, but it's got a huge spectrum, and you can turn it the percentage up way or down. Uh, but this is great, and it's got an adapter in the back. So what's nice about that is, so here's a perfect example. <laughs> the reason why I don't have the battery in it now and that it's in the other room is because when I went to go do the last filming session, I got all the way to, you know, my location, which was like three hours away. And this was the only thing I forgot was the battery. Everything else I remembered pretty much. But I was looking all through my bags, looking through everything, all my stuff, no battery. But I had the adapter, so I was able to plug this in and I was able to use this as lighting so what's nice about these is if you don't want to carry this because it's heavier than this little guy, then sometimes you can use this for lighting in your scenes like backlight. Um, and, and that's what's great about this type of stuff. You can plug it in and use it as backlights also. You can never have enough lighting though, for real, whenever you're filming. Just remember that's a big tip. Anytime you can get light, get light. And now my wife's starting to... Terry Lim, she can vouch for that because now I'm starting to bug her about lighting all the time. Like, hey, get this or hey, get the loom cube or, you know, we're, we're trying to get the loom cube. The loom cubes are pretty um, cost effective, but the RGB ones are pretty, pretty high. All right. I think, is that it for, um, 
I think that might be it for lighting. Is that it for lighting? Oh, while we're also talking, you know, remember, don't forget about studio lighting. So, you guys see that? All right, so look, you got your umbrella, studio lighting. Uh, as I'm tripping over my my uh, one of my pods. Don't worry, honey. It's nothing expensive. It was just my pod, or my it was just my one of my cheap tripods. Uh, look, you got your box lighting. Okay, so I have two of these right now. So you see, it's got the diffuser panel on it. I don't know if you can see there. So it's got the diffuser. You guys probably seen these like in in all the behind the scenes kind of stuff. So you got your box lighting, and that usually kind of just sits right off camera. So I've got two of them. Okay. I've got the umbrella light, which is on the green screen. Also, it's good to get a good green screen. I got my entire, as you can see, that's the corner of my room. See that? That's the corner of my studio. And so the green screen actually wraps half, it's half the room, and it wraps all the way, the full wall, all the way to the other half of the room. It's pretty cool. I love that. My wife was cool with that uh, because, you know, she's awesome. And, but it gives me a whole another half a studio that I can use for um, a, a second camera. I can have other people in here if I wanted. So it gives me a lot of expansion. Now, if I wanted to, I could paint the uh, the trim or hang another green screen up there. And and it's kind of hard to hang on your ceiling, right? So you probably would you could paint your ceiling to kind of match your your background. If I wanted to do these type of shots and still have, um, if you, that way you guys didn't have to see the ceiling, but I just raise up because normally I'm sitting down. That's why you're seeing that. So no big deal. Uh, okay. Um, so lighting, yes, yeah, studio lighting. Oh, and here's another thing. Lighting is important when you're going out and filming. Now I know some of you are ghost hunters. You're like, Josh, I'm not going to be like set, lighting up a set. But again, this is for some of you that may even be um, advanced uh, ghost hunters, and maybe you're getting into YouTube, uh, maybe you're starting to film things, um, or maybe you're amateur ghost hunter and you're starting to film things. If like so, if you're filming um, like uh, interviews, uh, you're filming yourself, you're going to want to have some lighting, and you're going to want so these studios. By by the way, the umbrella, which I have a second one. There's like two umbrellas two box lights, all the diffusing, green screen, white screen, black screen. Uh, what else? But all of that's in like one carry bag. Believe it or not, it all collapses and folds down and you can take it, uh, take it on the road. So that's what I'm saying. It's awesome. You're going to want to definitely do that. So let me see. Bob said something. Let me see what he said. Right. And Bob's basically saying, yeah, if you're having a large variety of equipment gives you options. So certainly you want to have a lot of options for uh, investigating. That's absolutely true. And you're 100% correct, Bob. I, I'm, I want to add that. Remember, so what I wanted to do today also is to not only show you guys just a variety of paranormal equipment, but just equipment. And, and a, a lot of times it gets overlooked. We always talk about um, spirit boxes and, you know, SLS cameras and things like that. But we don't always talk about the lighting aspect of, of filmmaking when it comes to ghost hunting. Cause I know a lot of the stuff I had to figure out myself, you look up on YouTube and you look up how to like shoot things and cinematography and you get all kinds of awesome, impressive stuff. But a lot of it's daytime or golden hour and, in the night shooting is like cityscapes, um, things like that, or, or time-lapse photography. There's not always, you know, videos out there to talk about filming at a haunted location at night with just a flashlight and, you know, camera stuff. So that's why I'm also talking about some of this stuff. So two, two other things of when it comes to lighting is, one, a good ring light. Uh, just to have near you. Now, this one I normally have on also sometimes, but this one's really cool. My wife got me for this for me. 
she came across this. It looks a little wobbly, but it's not. It's just because it's it's just because I haven't I had this kind of unscrewed. But anyways, this here is the UB size. So it's a U B E E S I Z E UB size. And it's really cool. It's got it's a tripod, right? It's got a bunch, you know, there's like, see, there's more. So it extends pretty high. It's got your ring light. It's even got a cell phone holder. Um, and it's got a control on here. It's got a USB plug, so you can plug it into your computer or you can just plug it into a brick. Um, and it's got a little, uh, it's got different modes, um, warm light, cool light. Uh, you can raise and lower the brightness. Really cool to have. Now, this here, it's really cheap. You can find this at Walmart. This here has just got a little tripod. This is RGB. This has got like red light, green light. You know, this, this, this doesn't have full range. This just has basic colors, but it does have different modes. So you can use this. This is more for like studio effects. So if you want to have a background and you want to have red light or green light, like a different color, blue light behind you, um, you, you have one of these. What'd you say, honey? <laughs> oh. Okay. All right. I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. This is a lot to, I told you, this is going to be a lot to cover, but we're going to be showing a lot of equipment here. Um, okay. I think that may do it for lighting. I can't think of any other lighting I have that we really need to discuss. Um, okay. So let's talk a little bit about tripods because there's some different ways of, of standing things. Now, first of all, my camera right now that you guys are watching on is on a full size like tripod. It's got the crank where the top can extend. It's like your, it's like your, and, and in fact, it's from Amazon Basics. If you look up like Amazon Basics, you look up tripod, you'll see it. It's nothing super fancy, but it's nice. They're not bad. It's it does really well. It's a step up. And in fact, if you guys have seen something like this, okay, the tripod I'm talking the tripod I'm talking about is like bigger than this. <laughs> this is like the small version, okay. But this is a small version. This is by XIT Photo. This one. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a little little bit of tip on this. This has got a little level on there. I don't know if you can see. Can you see the level? Well, the level is kind of green, so the green screen colors. But right there, the level. Um, this is kind of shitty. I'm just I'm just gonna level with you. I take it with me because it does work, but it it's almost like about a six a five to six degree tilt. Um, I have to actually correct and post whenever I film with this. It gives me kind of a tilted video. And I know that some of you may be saying, but Josh, there's a tilt adjustment right here. You know, you can tilt it. I get that. But the notches, right? This is one of those that has like notches. So if you go like one notch up, right? If you tilt up one notch, it's like it's the wrong way. It tilts the other way. The, you can't get it level, so you have to level it with the legs. So it's just a little bit of a pain in the butt. So you can level it with the legs. It just is more hassle. So I'm just letting you know. Um, it's good to have these, though, because these give you extra. Anytime you can get tripods, even if they are relatively cheap, it's good to have them. Just don't put, like, $3,000 cameras on them or something. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna. That's that's probably some some professional out there is probably going. That's good advice. I'm glad you said that because I was freaking out when you were showing people cheap tripods. <laughs> okay. Uh, other tripods include. Um, not much. Uh, but oh, I want to talk about this. This is one of my favorites. This is called Switch Pod. Now this was a a crowd funded um, one of those crowd fund deals. Okay, switch pods came out. Now they have some accessories. By the way, some of these um, things that I'm showing you guys, they have accessories. Okay, I'm just not going to break out accessories for each and everything. Okay, anyways, switch pod, really cool. 
It's like a handle. You can you can film with it, okay? And it's got a ball head on the top, so you can again adjust and get different angles. You can also um, like right now I can be in selfie mode and, or turn it around. Go this way now. What's great about the switch pod is there you go. Now it's a tripod. See, so you can just set that bad boy down. And you got yourself a little tripod. Now, is it going to be like a high tripod? No. This is just meant for like if you're vlogging or maybe you're shooting. This is actually one of the pods. This is one of the main ones that I use. See? And it just collapses down. This is what I use to hold my rig. So when I'm walking around, I'm holding this rig and I'm shooting. I'm, sh I'm filming, you know, my episodes. And then if I need to set my camera down... I can just flip it out, set it down. I can set it up on a, a dresser, a table, and, you know, I can adjust the ball head to give me the shot that I want. So it's got some options, you know, maybe not the, all the greatest options, but it's just a great, great, and it's built well. There was a few little drawbacks, like when the side thing, it kind of falls down. It can. It gets a little clanky, if you guys can hear that. So... Um, some of the people, they've been modifying them by putting little magnets in there. So it sticks, it just stays together. So there's a little bit of a modification. It's supposed to have little magnets already in it, but they're just, they're, they are really weak. Now, I don't know if they've ever fixed that or not. I don't know. I'm, this is one of the, one of the first ones to go out, but Terry Lynn came across these people and, um, these, this worked out for us. I really do like my switch pod though. I, this is one of my working things. So when I tell you it's my working thing, that just means that's like I said, that's what I use when I'm filming the most. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? See, guys, I brought so much stuff and I set set things down places. I'm trying to make sure I don't miss something. But there is one more thing. I don't know where what I did with it. I just I brought them down here. Well, this is awkward. <laughs> like, great, Josh. Now your show was flowing good. It was doing good. And now you lost your next thing, your next show and tell device. All right. Well, oh, here it is. I found it. All right. Okay. This is the Joby Gorillapod. Okay. This here, they, they have a few different sizes. But what's cool about this this has been around a while, but it flexes, it bends, okay? So what's really cool, again, you can kind of shape this how you want, but what's really neat about this is when you get in certain situations, you can actually wrap this around like, um, like poles and railing and trees, branches. You can hook it on and allows you to get some different angles, again, would I trust this with some expensive rigs in, in certain situations? No, but there's also some great attachments with this. There's some quick release uh, stuff, and, and it's got measurements where you can remember where your marks are. It's, it is a good tripod to have in your bag of tricks when it comes to filming. This is something that you want to have with you. You may not use it. Like, in fact, I haven't used it. Um, but you want to take it with you because one of these days you're going to want that shot and you're going to be like, man, if only I could grab on to that branch. <laughs> That's when this will come in handy. Okay. All right. So that is tripods. Oh, no. No, I got something else I want to show you guys. This will be for your GoPro folks. So this is something now. I, I'm going to bring this in. Now, I'm going to cover up the handle because it's got our information. But this is a QM1 mount, okay, QM1. Okay, a guy makes these. Now, you'll notice there's two hooks, right? There's a, a gap right here, and there's a gap right here. This is for fences, okay? This is for, like, wires and things like this. This was pretty much designed for tennis, to go film tennis. It's got the telescoping uh, handle. So you can reach up and hook it on the top of a tennis fence. However, 
and it's got the tilt. See, there's like a little tilt. So you can you can set it wherever you want. So what's nice about this though is that if you have a GoPro, you can use this for like a fence, things like that. If you're in those situations, it's got the telescope handle. It's probably not something you're you're probably gonna use a whole lot. You can use it as a monopod also with a GoPro um, or movie camera. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys because it is something you could potentially use. Now, like I said, we use it for our son's tennis, but I just wanted to show you guys because I thought it was important. Okay. So I think, I think now that probably does it for tripods. Like I said, there is things called monopods. Like I was just talking about, that's when you just have, it's like one stick, you know, that you can use. Those are good for certain things. Um, Again, you know, it's up to you if you want to use it. All right. Uh, do we, let, me, let me double check. Did I miss anything? Oh, I see you see me. Hey, how's it going? I'm going to say what that looks like. I'll have to watch it back. <laughs> I'll have to watch it back. Too funny. Okay. All right. So um, let's talk about... Let's see, because I've got all kinds of stuff, so I want to I want to kind of get into a few different things. Now, okay, so one thing for sure, let's talk a little bit about gear. Okay, uh, there's all kinds of gear out there. Okay, and and I don't mean gear as in. Uh, let me just rephrase. Um, let's talk about storage for your gear. Let's just put it that way, because there's all kinds of things. Now, first of all, backpacks. When you're first starting out, backpacks are really nice because, again, like you may not have a lot of equipment. You might have to hike back to some abandoned area, whatever. Now, this right here is like one of my favorites. This is a Tarion, T-A-R-I-A, or T-A-R-I-O-N, Tarion. And you can see this top, it actually collapses down. But this backpack, you can you can fill up this top pouch. It's awesome. Hard shell right here. And this right here, I don't know if you guys can see that. You've got slots for memory cards. You can put batteries. It's got a waterproof or water cover. And this is for camera gear, okay, or any anything else. Right now, I've got some leftover, like because I've been I've been showing off or I'm showing off all this stuff to you guys, so I've got a lot of things removed. But this is where you can store a camera, lenses, all kinds of stuff. So if you want to hike back and film something, this is this is a great great bag. I love this bag. I, I cannot stress it enough. I wear this all the time when I leave to go on trips. I take this with me. It's got side pouches that I put my uh, my tripods in. I usually have like on one side I'll have my switch pod and and I'll show you guys and something else. And then the other side I'll have the the one smaller tripod or sometimes the bigger one. Um, but it's really safe. <laughs> got some some uh, pepper spray, right? <laughs> So another thing that you, it's kind of hard to show you guys is there is actually on this nice, and this is very comfortable, by the way. It's got, it lets you breathe. It's just very comfortable. But there's a, like, zippers right here. I don't know if you guys can see. Can you guys see maybe those zippers? But this has got a storage for a laptop. So you, this bag is amazing. You put a lot in here, and it keeps things nice, safe, secure. And when, if it gets rained on, again, this material, um, it'll it'll keep your stuff nice and nice and cozy for a while. There's also just like any of your normal standard uh, backpacks. You know, if you find a backpack, hey, use it. You know, until you get something different. Um, also, for storage wise, is is uh, is your camera bags. Of course, you can do your conventional. 
This is like your small little normal camera bag. You can put like a DSLR in here. Like if you have it, like if you have your camera configured like this with just a, like a standard 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens, you can put that in here. It'll fit. You know, this is just as good for like a quick little grab and go. And you're going to go shoot maybe some pictures or some basic video. This makes nice little grab and go cases. And I've got a nice big camera bag, which just imagine that one, but like times 10. Uh, this thing is big. I'll show you guys maybe a little later, but right now I've still got some stuff in it for the show and tell. So I don't want to just lift it up <laughs> on the camera. So I'm just going to tell you about it for now. I know it's show and tell, not tell and tell. Uh, all right. Oh, yeah, yeah. So storage now. But yeah, anytime you have cases with stuff. So just like this, this is like another camera bag. In this case, this is the drone uh, bag. So which we'll talk about later. But anytime you get these type of bags, hold on to them. Because in the beginning, you may not be like those fancy shows where you show up and you've got four or five of those big hard shell trunk cases, right? They're, they're just those big trunks. They're hard shell. They open them up and, you know, they're all uh, got the foam cutouts. Uh, you may not have that in the beginning. You know, it, it takes you some time. We don't even have that. Um, but so when you're first starting out or – when you're at a certain level in life and you just don't have that extra income to always be buying really fancy stuff, hold on to these cases or just backpacks, simple backpacks um, that you find for school. It doesn't even matter if it's like a Spider-Man backpack. You know what I mean? It, you know, if it's something you like or, or whatever, hey, you know, use that until you can move up and get other things. Um, also, storage-wise, let me show you something that I Terry Lynn scored amazing on this. Definitely props to you, honey. And I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys something here. Uh, okay, so check this out, right? Some of you may recognize this and say, hey, that looks like a tool box thing. And the answer, the simple answer is why, yes, it is. But what's amazing about when you score something like this, see, this was on sale, okay? Um, these normally run like 40 bucks a piece. And let's just put it this way. This pretty much was like 20% off or 50% off. So not only with rigid, okay, now remember there's like Husky, um, there's DeWalt, there's Milwaukee. There's a few different ones that have this type of system. But this rigid, I, I got to tell you, for the price, these latches, I don't know if you can hear them. These latches, they're very solid, okay? It's got the handle, okay? I'm going to show you guys some things, some things. But check this out. So not only do you have, but if you look, I don't know if you can see, but there's an orange ring around the clear, the top part. It's a seal for water. So some of the other ones don't have a seal. They're just a, a plastic lid that shuts down and clamps on with cheaper latches. This actually has a gasket seal around there to help your stuff. And all of these bins, they're all removable. So you can remove every single thing out of here. So what's cool about this, if you want hard shell cases for your equipment without without spending two, $300 on those fancy ones, you can get this. You can remove all of these inserts, or you can even keep some, and you can line, you can go buy some hobby, some foam from like Hobby Lobby or maybe Michael's or even Walmart. Although we went to Walmart today, and the foam they had was white. But we, we got to go look for the black foam. But you can line this with foam and then cut out and make your own etchings to put lenses, detectors, whatever you want in here. But for the price, this is awesome. The fact that, you know, this is going to have that seal on there. Oh, man, that's that's a huge deal, you know, to have that protective seal, um, especially when you have equipment in there. Again, and what's cool is it's kind of see-through. Now, they have 
if you're not, if you, I think it's kind of cool to have the see through. I think it's, it's kind of neat, so you can kind of look and see. But keep that in mind that if you go to film, you go to locations, other people may see what you have, and you, you know they might see, oh man, that's some expensive stuff, and then, you know they might want to take it. So just keep that in mind. Uh, now another feature about these, which I love, and it's kind of hard to demonstrate. But if you see, there's handles on the sides. See that? And what's cool is, so you can carry with the handles on the sides also. But if you have more than one of these, which we we, we got more, you can stack them. And then these handles flip up and, and they interlock with the other one above it. So you can actually have a stack of three or four or however many all stacked up. And then you can dolly them. Or they have another one that has wheels and a handle, and then you can car them all around, and they all stack together. So it's a whole system. And like I said, you can layer all you want, but I'm telling you guys, for the for the cost and the fact that it's hard shell with a seal, I love it. Terry Lynn, you did good, baby. All right. So... Some equipment is very delicate and does need special padding. High cost, delicate gear should not be placed in a bunch in a bag. Right, exactly. So, and Bob brings up the point. And like I said, when you're just starting out, if you if you spend most of your budget on a camera, protect the camera. Because even if the rest of your gear, always try to find a way to pad it. Even if you're wrapping it up in towels and putting it in a, in a backpack. But your camera, you should at least be able to keep it in a small bag. And these bags are super cheap, you know, super duper cheap. You can keep your camera in that or something. But that's why I said as you grow and you get, you, you know, like I said, we just got those. So now we're going to have some hard shell cases for some of our stuff. We'll be able to consolidate some of our small things down into that. So a lot of um like luggage you know oh and also luggage too like sometimes you get the hard shell luggage or even just soft shell luggage that's got the extending handle with the little rollers hey those work great for for storing stuff too but again even like bob said make sure if you have delicate equipment wrap it up or buy some foam cut out the inserts make sure that sit you know fits in there nice and snug so there's ways of protecting that stuff so so definitely you know, hopefully that I love that I love those though. Those are awesome. So I think that might do it for storage. All right. So guys, let's talk about quickly. Let's talk about audio. Okay. So for studio audio, you guys have most of you have probably watched the show. So you know that uh, I have this boom mic here. There's a shock mount right here. This this thing with all little strings and all that. That's a shock mount. So. Okay, so I unplugged myself. That's a good way to demo things. Okay, so like I was saying, you have the shock mount. That way, if you bump yourself or whatever, it's <laughs> me. I unplugged the stupid thing. But, yes, you got your microphone. You got your shock mount. And then, of course, you got your boom arm, which you can move around like I was showing you guys while I was muted. Uh, that's always fun, right? Uh, <laughs> so, see, this is live. Who cares, right? This is what we do. Um, so microphone, so if you're in the studio, again, this is a Behringer uh, 1CU, I believe. Um, again, my wife found this a great deal for me. She's kind of our shopper. So, like, I tell her, like, hey, honey, I need to get a studio mic for my computer, blah, 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 like a condenser microphone or whatever. And she'll look it up. She'll research, and she'll try to find And then she'll be like, hey, well, how about this? And sometimes she'll find, like, I think she got this one for, like, 15 bucks or something. It was, like, something crazy. And normally this was, like, $60 or something. I don't remember. But anyways, she does good with that stuff. Um, but 
this this works decent. Now I do have to boost it a little bit. Um, and we can I don't want to get too deep into that. That could be like a whole nother video of setting up audio. But this is just a basic setup. And this arm, by the way, this boom arm, uh, it's like a desk thing. You, it just clamps to a desk. Okay, so I actually have it clamp clamped to the desk next to me. Uh, as far as when you're out in the field, you're going to want a good microphone. Um, this here is a Rode mic. You see this a lot with YouTubers. This is also kind of in a shock mount itself, this, this red device. So it's kind of floating in there. Um, you can see it kind of bouncing. But right here, there's a couple different options. You can go bare mic if you want. Um, this is probably the, the best configuration you're going to want. Okay. I love how our show is so like laid back. My wife just yells from another room and that's <laughs> just how we are. We have, <laughs> we, we don't care. All right. The other thing, let me look, let me look. Cause she told me I need to read, read comments. So he said, Hey Terry, oh, I literally just got here and thought my audio went out. So you thought your audio went out? <laughs> yes. So we've been covering all kinds of equipment and advice and, but anyway, so this is another thing that you see is the dead cat. I mean, muff, I mean, uh, silencer. So this here is great for wind because this is going to baffle the wind. Uh, and this will diffuse the wind basically. So when you get in those real windy areas, a lot of professionals like to use that. My problem with this is when this is attached to my camera, unfortunately, uh, the muff sticks out too far and it's in, it's in frame, uh, just a little bit. Like it's like, like a little bit in frame or something. So a lot of times when I'm shooting, I've been able just to use the normal, uh, cover and this diffuses pretty well as also, but this road mic plugs in your, it's got the 3.5 millimeter jack and this plugs into your DSLR. And this provides great quality. So whenever you guys hear the quality on my uh, my field videos, um, this is what I'm using right here. So that's my working field microphone. Um, what? This is not professional. All right. So, <laughs> so we got a boom mic here. This also is a regular microphone with a USB, and this is actually a rock band microphone from the PlayStation 3. However, this works for when I have guests in the studio, things like that. I can also use this microphone as a backup. All right. I call it fluffy. Much better. Much better than dead cat. Yeah, I mean, that's just look, don't be afraid. Like that's just what people call this thing. They just call it the dead cat. You know, whenever you so if you hear that in terms like on other YouTubers or Hollywood, stuff like that, they'll call it like the dead cat. So um, but anyways, <laughs> Terry Lynn calls it fluffy. So there you go. So we have a we have a, a different term, right? A more positive term. Oh, and I forgot, like with lighting, um, I forgot. Uh, lighting, don't forget, we have flashlights, IR lights, infrared lights, camera mounted lights, uh, and of course, lightsabers. Don't forget your lightsaber. This could save your life. I just happen to have that around. So there you go. Anyways, so let's transition into, I think we covered, did we cover audio? No. Oh. No, because that's audio recording. I don't want to talk about audio recording yet. Um, oh, you can do wireless audio, which I'm trying to get for my DSLR. And I don't have it on me. Okay, I don't have it on me. But there's also you can get the Laveler mics that clip onto you, like you see in a lot of you know shows. They'll clip on microphones. 
Some of them are wired. I have one that uh, is um, hard line to my uh, iPhone. I also have one, or I'm working on getting one for like hopefully a wireless lavalier system for my DSLR because you know it's it's just the road mic's nice, but having wireless audio because the road mic is nice, but it's got a mount on your camera, and I'll go into that in a little bit too. Um. So I hope you guys are still enjoying this. I know it's a lot. I know we're covering a lot, but I hope you guys are getting a lot of good stuff from it, uh, especially um, for you guys that maybe are, again, getting into paranormal or doing paranormal, and maybe you didn't think about some of these things. But we've done so many investigations. It's good to think about these are a lot of things that you want to have prepared. Like when we go to investigation, we take a lot, but we don't always use a lot. We just have it. And I'm not talking about just things for investigation. I'm just talking about things in general. So there's a couple things I want to cover as well, like some odds and ends. Okay. This is going to cover protection and um, uh, medical, right? <laughs> so, all right. So first of all, there's a couple different things. One, and I'm trying to find, here we go. This right here, this is a 74 piece medical first aid kit. This fits right into my backpack, like the backpack I showed you earlier. This is one of the things I keep in it. It's very light, but it's a 74 piece first aid kit. You can get them at Walmart, really cheap, but it's great. It's got all types of different uh, butterfly bandages, spot bandages, knuckle bandages, antiseptic wipes, uh, sting relief, safety pins, antibiotic ointments, waterproof matches, a razor blade, a tin, it comes in a reusable tin. All great things. Keep that on you as well when you go out and film. See, people forget about those things sometimes. So remember, get, get your first aid. And showing you guys so much, I have to, I got stuff everywhere. Um, this is 255-piece kit here. This is good to keep in the car. Uh, keep nearby when you go. Again, I have that in the back. See, the, the small one, keep this on you. Like, keep this in a backpack. Keep this where, like, when you go into the woods or whatever. This can stay with your car or at your base camp. So, if you, and, and a lot of people, if you go filming at these big locations, there's always, like, a room where that's, like, your base camp. You're going to have all your equipment. The, the, the owners might provide power there. But this is a great thing to have in your base camp in case you're out filming and one of your crew members gets hurt. Again, have your first aid kits available. You know, your life will thank you. Okay. Also, um, again, I showed you with my backpack. I don't want to lift my backpack up again. But you saw there was pepper spray. So when I've got the backpack on, that pepper spray hangs right there. So I can easily pull it. It, it can, it'll disconnect and I can use it right there. Boom. Pepper spray. Also another, the next thing that you're going to want to graduate to is your, your field knife. Okay. You'll have your field knife. It can attach to your leg. You see there's like a leg hole, uh, things like that. Um, you've got that. And this has got, what I like too, is that it's got the grips. So, if you have to stab something, not someone, stab something, you're not going to, your fingers aren't going to slide up across the blade. Okay. So I just wanted to show you guys again. You want to have your, your field knife. Okay. Now, when that doesn't work, then you bring out your. Your next thing, your next weapon, all right, your concealed weapon, all right? And if you want, then you have your, I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> you have your laser dot. <laughs> so there you go, all right? There. So you have your variety of, of protection, pepper spray, knife, gun, whatever you want to take. Just remember your local laws. If you do take your gun, make sure you have per permits. I know for me, we live in Tennessee, and our concealed carry covers 40 states. So it's pretty nice. 
But with that being said, just because you may have a lot of states uh, with your reciprocity laws, just make sure you double check your laws because with, especially now with all the gun laws that are changing, it's really important to make sure you check and make sure you don't end up in something. With me giving you things to show or no, no, not a whole lot. I'm <laughs> my son's trying to come down here to help me out because I've been going around grabbing things. Okay, so I think that mostly covers protection. I don't think there's anything else I can think of. Actually, if you want, can you give me some water though? Yeah. Like, please, I'm dying. I need some water. I got coffee, but I got some coffee, but I actually need some water, guys. It's kind of warm in here, man. I'm showing you guys all this stuff. I'm getting kind of hot. All right. Let me, uh, let, me, let me try to take a moment and catch up on some comments here, maybe. Don't forget the often forgotten piece of equipment called a sidearm, sage, holy water, or spiritual first aid. Uh, Paulo Santo, need to order more. So all good advice. All good advice, guys. I mean, seriously. Um, uh, Terry Lynn, <laughs> still looking at the fluffy part. But yes, all good advice. If you want to take spiritual protection as well, cross, holy water, sage, you know, again, whatever's going to work for you, protection, right? Also, I got my my clear quartz crystal. Is this focusing? I don't know. Anyways, clear, clear quartz crystal um, or your other crystal, as long as you program it for some protection. Uh, keep in mind, though, I'm going to tell you this. So... With religious devices, now remember, guys, I, I don't hide the fact that I am a Christian. With religious devices like crosses and things like that, if you're going to do an investigation, remember those devices, you might want to keep those nearby, but you may not want to bring them into the home. Thank you so much. See, my son brought me, uh, you know, some ice water. Mmm, yummy, yummy. That's awesome. I'm gonna go sit over here though. I don't want to. I don't want to spill it on anything. All right. All right. So now protection. Uh, so much. This is what I told you guys we're covering a lot, guys. I'm trying to hook you up with a lot of advice and information. So, uh, but yes, spiritual. Oh, oh what I was saying with spiritual. Keep it aside. Keep it nearby, but you may not want to. And, and also, like when I when I did my protection, um, when I programmed this, I programmed this for to protect from invasion, but I still programmed it to allow communication and things. So again, it's important because you don't want to walk into a place all, you know, uh, you know, you got your crosses and you got your protection, your your stones, and you're just some walking force field. The paranormal is not going to probably come around you, <laughs> you know. So when you're not experiencing anything all night long, now you know why. So you got to have that balance of protection, but not, you know, you want to make sure that you're able to experience paranormal. Uh, yes, and Bob also said to maybe notify the authorities in advance if you're going to be in certain locations, and that's true. That can also be good, especially if you know. It could be a location where the police may for sure show up. You don't want them jacking you up, especially if you're trying to do like a nice video and you're like, oh, man, all this stuff's going on. All of a sudden, police lights and they're shining and they're knocking on stuff. Doo, doo, doo. Yeah, that, that's, you know, we've had that happen. <laughs> we've had that happen. A lot of experienced investigators will definitely tell you that same thing, too. Um, all right. So I think we covered a lot of that type of stuff. Um, I want to do cover a little bit about actual mounts and things. Um, a couple things. One is this is a Ulanzi mount for a cell phone. This thing is great because, as you can see, there's a little the centerpiece here. It's got a um, a little knob and a spring. Oops. You can adjust it for your cell phone. You can lock it into place, and this is great. You can you can do all your your camera shooting. It's got different cold shoe mounts. There's actually some quarter screws for your tripod type stuff. Another tripod mount down there. Another tripod mount if you want to mount it in, in uh, portrait mode. Uh, but this is this is only like 15 bucks. You can do selfies with it if you want to aim it at yourself. Again, 
you know, you can, uh, you know, mount your little light on here. You can, uh, where is it? See, you can have your 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 road mic, your your lighting, your phone, uh, or your your. This is not really for DSLR, so maybe your road mic <laughs> road mic may not work. But I'm just saying, if you had a mic compatible external mic for your iPhone or whatever. But again, you lounge them out. This is like 15 bucks. I love this thing. Durable, lightweight. It's plastic, but it's like a strong plastic. Um, trust me, when you hold it, you're, you'll you'll understand. You'll be like, oh yeah, this is quality. Because you know what I mean. You know that cheap plastic. Uh, Yolanzi also makes another great mount. This is a U, a U mount Yolanzi. This has got some different uh, shoes up here. Like you got top side shoes. And then of course you got your mount. This is great for a DSLR. You can, you can uh, get all kinds of shots with this low level. You can bank up, you know, like your down up shots. Um, but this is another great one where you can mount your lighting and lighting, you know, you, um, and you can also mount this on a tripod. It's got a, it's got like a pass through, so you can mount this on a tripod. It's or a switch pod. I've also put the switch pod on the bottom of this. Put my DSLR in here and had my road mic and my light all on the one this this rig like this. So this is another cheap thing for you filmmakers if you're going to film and you want something that you can get into that's you know, will allow you to hold all your stuff. Yulanzi makes some great mounts. Oh man, I love I love talking about all this stuff. I love the um, uh, equipment and everything. So I hope you guys like it. I hope this is a good show for you. All right, because I'm having fun. I'm gonna do it without you or not, with or without you. Hopefully, with you guys. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. So. Another quick thing. Another quick thing. I'm gonna uh, uh, I'm gonna pro pro probably bounce around back and forth on some stuff because I'm gonna miss some things inevitably. But on the microphone, you can see I've got a cover here. This did not come with the microphone, but it's got a little bit of a windscreen to soften things. And there's also you guys have probably seen this in like those music videos where they'll have the windscreen and they're just like, I am rolling together, whatever. So. They'll have the windscreen thing, and this just clamps on. You can clamp it onto your little thing here, and you can bend it. So windscreens also will help when you're doing audio. Also, um, tablets, right? Tablets are always good. This tablet we're able to use with the Necrophonic app. Um, so it's nice to have little um, inexpensive tablets like this. Uh, to when you're out and you want to do the necrophonic uh, type stuff or other um, app-based type spirit boxes or ITC communication. This just makes great for all kinds of little stuff. So get you a little iPad also to have. And one of the things, speaking of iPads, is get you one for your DS or for your uh, SLS camera. So if you want to build yourself an SLS camera, again, you can see it's made out of a Yulanzi mount. So you can see that. Remember that Yulanzi mount I showed you? Um, again, we've got another Windows 10 tablet. Uh, connect. And there you go. you got your SLS camera right there. So let's get into some communication devices, huh? Let's get some paranormal communicating. All right. So, so you want to communicate with spirits, right? Whether you you think you should or not. I just left you guys hanging. I had to go get a drink. <laughs> I was I'm dying of thirst down here. It's like it's actually kind of warm today. Normally down here in my studio, it's pretty cool. But anyways, okay. So you want to communicate well. There's different ways of communicating. Uh, one, you can just go and try to communicate and see if you can get them to speak to your audio recorder. So the first thing is just use a basic audio recorder. The great thing about audio recorders is that they've been around for years. Now, nowadays, we use the digital ones. Of course, back in the day, we had 
cassette tapes and things like that, or even the little micro cassettes. Um, but anyways, the digital ones are using now, they range, again, I'll show you the white one that I have. This is the Zoom H1N. We ha I have a black one also. So we got a couple of these. It's got the multi-directional microphones up top. It's also got a gain knob. Uh, gain means if you crank it up, you're going to get a lot of white noise. Uh, but it's, it could be like really, really loud. It may even peak uh, where you get that. <laughs> Sorry, space ball reference. <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, I usually have this set somewhere in the middle as far as gain goes. But anyways, get yourself an audio recorder. Um, also, you can record audio. Just remember just when you're filming with your video, like through that Rode mic, um, you know, any of your devices that capture audio, don't forget to go back and listen for EVPs. Don't just watch a video when you get back to, you know, evidence review. Listen with headphones while you're watching it because you might capture EVPs there as well. But anyways, audio recording is definitely the way to go. Um, that's that's kind of like your first step. Now, the downside is, is that you can't hear it in real time. So this is why it was really popular during the shows in the beginning because people would watch the shows and they would they would set recorders out and then later on they'd play them back and you'd capture, you know, they'd have the evidence review. Everything was edited and it was great. But nowadays it's like people are getting a little bored. They, they don't want to wait until the end. They want instant results. Therefore, the spirit box as well. Um, but audio recording, again, it's very important to do your audio recordings. Now, so another way to communicate is through spirit boxes. Now, there's all kinds of spirit boxes out there. You have your, like, your S-Box made by GoStop. Now, the thing about S-Box, okay, is I'm just going to be blunt with S box, what I love is that it gives you some false results. So, Josh, you might be saying, Josh, what do you mean? You love it. It gives you false results. I don't want to say that it gives you false results or whatever, but it, it's designed to kind of hang when there's like a spike. The way they justify it is they said that like when a ghost communicates, there's like a spike and it kind of hangs on that communication. I'm not a big fan of that because the whole theory of spear boxes is they, they go through that range of frequencies at a certain rate, whether it's fast, slow, or, you know, they go through the rate. And obviously if a word is said over those different frequencies, then it must be spirit spirit related because it's different frequencies, but it's one word. And again, People can say that there's pareidolia or whatever, like you know, audio that you're hearing things, that type of stuff. But S box, that's the only downside is that it kind of hangs on that. So it's great for for videos if you want people to hear things that sound like words or or it has a uh, it's more film friendly. Let's put it that way, video friendly. But if you if you want to be serious about ITC, then you're going to want to move to other things. Um, now you have sort of a basic uh, SB7 or PSB7. The, the downside about these, the, the default speaker, very, very low, very low. If you invest in one of these SB7s, make sure you get an external speaker, which they have ports to plug into. Get you a little speaker. You will definitely thank me for it. Um, and then there's the bigger model, which has... You can do two different ones at the same time. You can reverse and fast forward. That's the SB11. I don't have that on me, so I'm just showing you this one for now. Now, in conjunction with spirit boxes, you can use you can use something like this. Okay, this is an angel or spirit box. This is a or ghost box. Or is, it, is this an angel box? I think this is an angel box. Yeah, I think this is called Angel Box. Sorry, Phil. But this is from Philip Page. Uh, his channel is Saving Ghosts. You can go check him out. He does a lot of content with uh, ITC communication. Uh, and he goes out in the field and does some cool things. 
Uh, so go check out his channel. Anyways, but he makes these, and uh, he made us a couple. We have the Angel Phone, and we have the Angel Box. We tend to like this one a lot more because the Angel Phone ended up being a little too bulky all the time. So we use this a lot. And you see the cord hanging down. This just plugs in your ITC device. You can unplug it. I just have it plugged in because I was just using it recently. Um, but this is like a big, it's like a speaker and a filter all in one. There's reverb and there's also noise cancellation. So what's nice is you can plug in your um, your SB7 instead of hearing the, ch -ch 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 -ch, it kind of cuts that out. So whenever you hear something come across, you'll only hear the words a lot of times. So that's what's kind of nice about this is it kind of clarifies and you don't have always that annoying, you know, ch -ch 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 sound. So there you go. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of uh, other communication devices. So that's as far as, oh, communicating like that. Now, um, I'll talk about these real quick. But because I, I, I consider these communication and detection devices, and that is EMF devices. Okay. So you have your classic K2 that a lot of people see. And then you have your Cambridge Labs, which not a lot of people see, but there is lights and both work really well. Um, we obviously we tend to use the K2 meter because I think visually a lot of people can see it um, on camera. It just works out a lot better. Than having this which looks more like something you cook with um so again people do, it's you know it's not as flashy it's not as cool so but it is good to have that way you can kind of get some different results but the k2 meter make sure you get this one that looks like this if you go and you get a k2 meter and it says like made in usa it's not it's probably the knockoff <laughs> okay so be very careful. Um, in fact, I believe if you go to like Ghost Augustine, there's a video that shows you because uh, they're the ones responsible for saving the K2 meter when it was about to go out of production um, back in a long a while a while back. But they do a video that actually shows you the differences between a real K2, which this is, or a fake one, which is also out there, and I see it in videos also. <laughs> so. So make sure you're using the real one. All right, but you can also communicate with those devices. That's why not only because see, here's the thing that bugs me about EMF meters is the way they're used. Um, people use them like they like they're ghost detectors. Okay, that's not how you're supposed to use them. You don't walk around a house and then when it lights up, you're like, oh my god, a ghost. Now, I know like in the one video game, Phasmophobia, you do. <laughs> it's like a ghost meter. Again, teaching people kind of the wrong way. But again, this is all you got to remember. The EMF meter is showing you EMF, right? It's going to show you EMF fields. Now, of course, the theory could be like, you know, if your EMF detector is going off and something happens and then it goes away, you know, there's ways you can use it to kind of, measure and detect but again you're supposed to be using it to measure and to track things so like for example if you walk around a house and the emf is off the chart it doesn't mean that like paranormal is going to be off the chart and it could be off the chart because people may be hallucinating a lot of it now there might be some paranormal but with a high emf it, it's gonna it's gonna get you know magnified right so again Make sure you're using it correctly. Now, to use it as a communication device, you can ask a ghost to light it up. Uh, and so if you start getting intelligent responses with it and you're like, hey, can you, if you, you know, make the lights light up for yes, you know, and that's when you can use it as a communication device. So that's why I said they can be both communication and also for measurement. All right. So back to communicating. Another way to communicate is with dowsing rods, okay? Now, I'm going to show you, this is a standard pair of dowsing rods. You can see here, and again, I like to always point this out, you see there's handles, okay? That's not just thick copper. This spins independently, right? 
Again, I always try to point this out. So if I'm just holding here, you see this top piece can just spin freely. Okay. All right. So when you're holding these, you're only holding the sleeves and the rods in theory is supposed to move in accordance with the spirits. Now, I don't know if they're also using your energy or whatever. I don't, I don't want to start. I don't want to start a session, but this is your standard pair of dowsing rods. Now, a couple things, if you get into doing dowsing rods, remember, just get your own pair. Um, you know, I don't like to share, like my wife don't share hers. I don't really share mine. You can, but you just need to make sure you cleanse them when you get them back. Um, but dowsing rods. And let me show you something here. This... This is a little bit of a special treat because Terry Lynn is letting me let me uh, show you guys. <laughs> now, again, you're allowed to touch other people's rods. You just don't want to use them. So let me show you Terry Lynn's. Look at this. So she's got, I think it's believe, I think it's hematite attached to them. They're very beautiful. Well done. They've got really attention to detail. On some some um, some of the bead work, I don't know if you guys can see, but really really nice. Very almost like a marbling effect on the handles, or like a I mean not even marbling, but like I guess maybe like an old pipe or something. It looks really cool. You got you got to see it. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but these things are really really cool. I don't want to hold them like you normally would because I don't want them to even think about syncing with me. But amazing, amazing spirit or dowsing rods. So there's Terry Lynn's. That's her. She just got them. She hasn't even used them yet. So <laughs> she had a basic set like me. But they, um, you can find these custom made uh, at certain places. So she had those. Those are very specific for her. All right. I don't want to just set that anywhere. But. All right, so communicating. You can use a lot of things to communicate with, guys. Remember, um, I don't have one on me, but let's talk Ouija boards or Luigi boards or Ouija boards or spirit boards, whatever you want to call them. Let's talk about them. So there's some people that freak out about them. Some people don't. I'm split in the middle. I don't like to mess with them only because of the way the planchette works. Just not a big fan. Um, so, but it is a communication device. Okay. You can literally make things out of paper to communicate. There's all kinds of ways you can try to communicate. So just keep that in mind. But I wanted to show you guys some of what we like to use for communication. Um, I'm looking around. I'm trying to make sure I don't forget a lot of things because I've been covering a lot. What are we at time-wise? Oh, my God. I can't believe it's 1025. Holy crap. Uh, wow. <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. At least it is for me. I don't even know if you guys are watching anymore. <laughs> All right. Uh, did she bedazzle them? Hey, now, don't pick on her rods, Bob. Those are awesome. And, I mean, seriously, those are cool. Uh Yep, we did, Stacy. Stacy, did we just physically make him bring up the uh, up the rods? And we did. I had those custom made spear boards. I'd rather be locked in a closet with a rabid badger. I use coconut shells. Don't use others' rods, but you can touch them. Right. So all good things, guys. You guys are. You guys always say really good things. Or unless they're mean to me, and then they're not that good. They're just funny for you guys when you guys pick on them. Don't pick on them. Uh, all right. Yeah, talk amongst yourself real quick. Whew. Okay, long show, but I love it. I hope you guys are getting a lot of this. Let's get into cameras now. 
This is a huge, 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 huge topic. All kinds of cameras. I got a um, Logitech. Oh, my God. Shut up. <laughs> I said Terrilyn had a nice set of rods. Hey, what can I say? <laughs> I said this is live. I don't know what's going to come out of my mouth sometimes. And I'm sure you guys will twist it how you want. That's how we do it here, right? Okay, so let's talk about cameras. All right. Uh, so, again, depending on what you want to do, for, for like my uh, web camera, I've got like a Logitech. Like, I think it's a 922 or something like that, but it works. You know, I know it's not always the greatest guys, but, uh, oh, and like I said, make sure you have a good green screen. Um, but for webcam stuff, use that. Now there's a lot of extra little cameras. Like when you're going out to film, there's some different things. You want to have your main working camera. So what is going to be the main filming of your body? Now, again, if you're just going out to film, to capture evidence. Again, guys, I'm just talking to you about kind of my side of things of filming stuff and filming it for YouTube videos or whatever. Um, so, and again, you can do it for however you want to do it for paranormal. So you want to have your main camera. So for me, my main camera right now is the Canon 77D. Um, this here does not shoot 4K. However, let me tell you about 4K. Remember, all this 4K talk, just remember, if you film, every, if all your cameras were 4K and you film everything in 4K, you have to not only have storage for all that files, but good luck trying to edit and process and render all that stuff. Uh, I hope you have a massive computer and all that stuff. So, look, 4K is nice, but we're still a few years from truly going full 4K. So in the meantime, you can still use a good 1080 um, high def camera. Uh, this is 1080. This shoots 1080. It's got 24 frames, 30 frames, 60 frames, but this works really good. The standard kit lens is 18 to 55 millimeters. That's going to be your standard. It's got a 4.5 uh, f stop, which means it's not amazing in low light. It's, you know, it's not really going to be a low light type lens. I really don't have a low light lens right now. I had one, but if you have some of the low light lenses, you have to be careful because if it's not made for uh, for video, it could just have a step motor. And if it has a step motor, that, that's your focusing motor, it, it can get a little loud if you have the onboard uh, microphone. Now, if you have an external microphone, or even your road mic, it might not. The road mic might not always pick it up. Um, so you just have to test it. Whenever you get a new lens, shoot some video, focus on some different things, test it. And that's what I did. I got a new lens and I tested it. Um, tested one last night. It turned, or you know, it turned out to be too loud. Um, so we returned it. You know, and you got to keep shopping around. But and and the nice thing about DSLRs is that, you know. You can change out your lens based on what you need. So this is an 18 to 55 millimeter lens. Now, the stuff on the bottom, don't worry about that. That's just a special mount for my gimbal, <laughs> which I'll talk about later. Um, but your DSLR, you have different lenses. So your 18 to 55 millimeter lens is a kit lens because that's kind of what's standard with Canon, right? You're either going to get like an 18 to 55 or like an 18 to 135. Um, but again, they kind of have just a, a, a 4.5, uh, speed, like an F stop. So again, you know, um, it's not going to quite let in a whole light, a whole lot of light. So for those of you wanting to find uh, a low light lens, you're going to want something with a low F number. So like 1.8, 2.8, anything low like that is going to allow more light. But when you the lower the F number goes, it seems like the higher the cost of, of everything goes. <laughs> so if you really want that low light lens, you got to really be careful. There's, uh, I mean, you can get lenses that cost fifteen hundred, two thousand, three, or just some ridiculous prices. Um, but they they do have some 
uh, some good lenses for like 200 bucks or under. Now, so 18 to 55, 18 millimeters is, is actually less than human sight. So it's a little more of a, a, a wider range shot. When you zoom all the way, right? So now when I zoom, I'm all the way to 55 millimeters. That means when I'm looking through this viewfinder and I'm zoomed in all the way to 55, that's like human eyesight. So the proportion that I see something on the wall, when I when I put my camera up, that's what I'm seeing. It may not fit in the picture because I'm seeing this big board on the wall and I'm looking through here, zoomed in, and, I, and it's the same size. So you might have to pull back and that's when you get a more wider scope, but it's not maybe true scale in, in that sense. So, but this is nice. 18 to 55 is like when I walk around and you guys watch me walking through buildings, walking through homes, that's what you're seeing is 18 millimeters. Now, there's some lenses right now. I'm looking at the 24 millimeter lens. It's called a pancake lens and it's a 2.8 f-stop, I believe. Um, it's an STM lens, which is a step motor. And that would give me a little bit of zoom in, but still not too much. Like it's still going to look, uh, it's not going to be real close, real close. So 24 millimeter to 18 would be the range if you just want to shoot, like walking through homes or walking through buildings, things like that. Um, so that's kind of the nice thing about DSLRs. So hold on one second here. All right, I had to shut my studio door. It's getting a little loud out there. All right, so with your lenses, so here's another lens. This is a Tamron lens. We take the tulip off. So this lens here, this is actually an 18 to 250 millimeter lens. I don't know if I can... Okay, so Bob, calm down. All right, so this here extends all the way out to 250 millimeters. So again, that's going to be about five times human eyesight. This here is great for uh, this Tamron lens. Tamron lenses aren't that bad. Um, a lot of photographers have used them, and they are a good. They're they're they're, they're um, affordable. Uh, this here does not have a real low f-stop. Again, this is only going to have like an f-stop of like four or five, I think. Again, not a low light lens, but what's great about this is you can really zoom in. You can take action photos. This is going to be more for your photography stuff. You're not going to do so much video with this, and I'm going to tell you why. One of the important things when you find these, and again, calm down, Bob. All right, so... When you find these lenses, make sure there's, there's two things you want to look at. One is, does it have autofocus or manual? So again, there's a switch on here for autofocus and manual focus. What this does not have is image stabilization. And the reason is, is because this is a lens for shooting still pictures. You can shoot video through it, of course, but this really is made for still photography so they didn't put image stabilization in it image stabilization means that the lens kind of floats almost like the shock mount right here on this microphone the 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 uh, lens kind of floats a little bit to help stabilize when you're shooting video so whenever you're shopping for lenses make sure you look for image stabilization and autofocus All right. oh and also too let me just show you a couple things about lenses. One is you can get these tulips. You can see a lot of times you'll see these on, you know, like a lot of times people think of like professional photographers. They'll have like the little uh, tulips or they'll have the, the hoods and stuff. A lot of that's just to prevent uh, lens flares from either harsh lighting, daytime shooting, things like that. But these tulips are really nice for that type of stuff. And they just come right off. You can spin them around and a lot of times they'll store right on your camera. Um, also, if you take the lens cap off, right, there's another great thing is some of your lens, you actually 
screw off this. This is no, this isn't part of the actual lens. This is the glass for the lens, okay? This is what's called a UV filter. A UV filter, which in this case, this one needs to be cleaned. So this, a lot of your camera lenses, if you didn't know this, they have threads on the end. So you can add all types of different filters. You don't have to just do an ND filter or uh, a UV filter. You can put an ND filter. You can put um, polarization filters, green, like colored filters. You can put all kinds of filters. Now, the reason why I wanted to show you guys about the UV filter is what's nice about that is so a UV filter used to protect lenses back when we used to have film before the digital days. Okay. So before the digital days, we had film. So the UV filters helped protect from that sunlight that would come in through the lenses and sometimes ruin film um, or equipment, right? So they had these UV filters. Well, over the years, as we transitioned to digital photography, um, and, and shooting, the UV filters sort of lost their purpose in a way. However, nowadays, you might be like, well, how come I see UV filters out there all the time, and should I use them? I mean, what should I have it on there? And the answer is, well, if, you don't, if you're not using another filter, sure, put it on there because that UV filter also is a protection. So if I was to be shooting and I run into something, that UV filter might shatter and not my expensive lens. So use it as a protective cover. That's what UV filters are nowadays. So I just thought you should know that. Um, and if you really want to go big, then you get your telephoto lens. All right. And this one here, uh, what does this one go? This one goes to 500 millimeters. So this one is like 10 times human eyesight. This is Vivitar. I've never used this because I have yet to figure out how to, I have yet to mount this. So apparently I got to check some comments here because I'm getting stomping on the ceiling. That's how professional we are around here. Good show. All right. So, oh my God, don't you dare tell me. I'll come down there sitting on hands so I don't type what I'm thinking. Love you, girl. The downside, high def camera, it's limits. And she had to email some cases. How's it getting loud? No one is down there. So there, I think I got all your comments. Did I get all the comments? I think I got all the comments, Kyle. Sorry about that. I mean, I'm standing up, so seeing the comments, guys, I'm sorry. I'm trying to cover a lot. There's a lot to talk about. I'm trying to give a lot of people good advice here. And I hope you guys honestly do like all this advice. Um, so... So cameras, let me let me kind of I'm gonna keep going a little bit on cameras. So one of the things is is like so let's say like right now my 18 to 55 millimeter has image stabilization, so I can shoot decent video. I mean, you still want to try to be steady with it. Um, so there's a couple different things. One is you can use a shoulder mount, which believe it or not, my wife got me a shoulder mount, and I don't think I have it down here, so I apologize. I don't really have it set up. I don't think I have it. Anyways, but there's a shoulder rig. It's got handles. You can kind of visualize me holding. It, you mount your camera. You got some handles. There's another piece that goes onto your shoulder. And this is your three-pointed mount system that you can turn. And that's great for stabilization as well. But this is the... This is the bad boy right here. So this is the Moza Aircross 2. Okay. It's got a tripod on the bottom. This can actually be removed, you know, which I don't really want to do that right now. But this thing turns on. This is a gimbal. Okay. So I didn't, I was, I was thinking about having this set up originally, but in all honesty, you know, but this gimbal, your, your camera goes on here and this has motors on here. You balance it all out. And then the motors, this is what allows your camera to float and has that stability. You can run with it. It's going to keep your camera stable. Um, but this here is awesome. Love it. I, I just got this. Thank you, honey. Happy Father's Day to me. 
<laughs> and again, this I'm so looking forward to using. And I will show you guys more about the Moza Aircross 2, maybe another video. But I wanted to show you guys that for sure. So, so definitely get your gimbals. Um, your gimbals are great. Now, I'm going to get to another special camera here in a second. So, and uh, Terry Lynn's proud, but I want to cover a couple other little cameras too. So, again, so you might be thinking to yourself, well, Josh, I cannot get into a DSLR camera. I can't, I don't have that kind of money. Um, you know, so that, that's all nice and everything. Well, first of all, that 77D is not super duper expensive. You can look at maybe sell, like I sold some things around the house. And we were able to get it, um, and my wife's, you know, got one. But all right, so right here, these these little cameras right here. This one, let me see. If you look at the top, you see, do you see those couple little lights, the the in the ring of the camera? Those are IR. Those are infrared lights. So this camera here, we use for night vision. And this is great. In fact, I just filmed myself uh, sleeping, you know, during a paranormal investigation with this camera, okay, with time lapse. You can plug it in with an out with a cord. This thing will record for a, a quite a long time. Uh, it's got a little hot shoe uh, attachment. But this here is, it's got high def. I mean, the, the quality of this, 26 megapixels, 1920 by 1080 high definition, it's got uh, ultra definition, but this camera here, it's DVC, digital uh, video camera, this, these things are just like little China cams, but I'm going to tell you, this little IR camera, it's, 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 it's really nice. It really is, I will say. Now, so if you want to get into some basic IR and you just can't afford any, any IR lights or anything like get something like that. It's not very expensive and they really, and, and they're pretty good quality. Now, something like this. Okay. This is another similar camera. This is another, um, another similar camera, another HD camera. This one does not have the uh, infrared though, but this is just a basic camera. I use this as a second cam. When uh when I you know like when I was doing my drone video, uh, but these little cams these these are the kind that you can put on a little tripod. You set in a room. You can use it as a static cam, and you can film like a hallway, or you can set this up and have your grid lights going. You know, but these little cameras, man, you can buy these things real cheap. Amazon, eBay, just you know, super cheap. But the quality, I'm telling you, the quality of these are not that bad. I mean, are they gonna are you going to sit there and be able to, to, to like do some awesome videos and things like that? Maybe, maybe, but they make great cameras for tripods for sure. And to capture those other shots. All right. So that covers some of that. Now there's another camera. I want to show you guys this thing. Um, this thing's awesome. Now, you could do a whole video on this camera as well. So what I'm going to show you guys is Terry Lynn's <laughs> little pride and joy. <laughs> All right. And Terry Lynn, you're going to have to type the name of this camera in chat because I suck. Okay, so this here is an amazing camera right here. This little guy right here. <laughs> so you can see here, I just turned it on. It's got a little gimbal. Look at that. It looks like a little robot. This little camera right here is amazing, okay? It's got a gimbal. You can run with this thing, and it's got image, you know, it will stabilize images. It's got high definition. This thing, it records at 
many different frames per second. Let me just tell you, I wish I could show you the test footage from this, um, but this thing is amazing. I love this thing. It's a great, it's not a replacement for like a main cinematography camera, so to speak, but you can do amazing things with this. I'm telling you right now, I can't stress this enough. Terry Lynn really showed me how awesome this is with the, the gimbal. And you can set different modes. The, so you, the, gimbal, the, the gimbal is going to act how you want it to act. It's, if it's going to track certain things, um, you know, if it's going to follow you, first-person perspective, if it's going to see how it's kind of staying even, right? Or you can have it where it does tilt, which I'm not going to go and mess with her settings. Um, so... Uh, so there, I just turned it off, honey. <laughs> but this thing, and, and what I got to say about it, they've got, like I said, you could do a whole video on this camera, so I don't want to get too much into it, but it's got this case that's got all of your little um, adapters. It's got tr a little tripod here. It's got just so many things, so many things. Um, all right, honey, I'm just trying to be careful. She's going to kill me if I do this wrong. So I'm trying to make sure I put it away. Perfect. So <laughs> we try to, Tara Lynn really prides herself on taking care of things, which she should. Um, I try to take care of things. But what's also, also awesome about this Comes with a wireless microphone system. Yes, right here. This clips onto you. It's a wireless mic. So, and it, and the audio sounds great. We tested it out. So, it's even got what we call a fluffy, <laughs> right? It's got a fluffy. That <laughs> really cute. Goes on the uh, wireless microphone, you know. So, Okay. You just have to make sure when you put away your microphone that you don't bump the switch to on. But anyways, like you, I told you, there's a whole bunch of accessories and things you could go into. So sorry, honey, I'm not going to cover everything. But I will say, though, guys, if you can, um, I think she's, yeah, the DJI Osmo Pocket 2. So look it up. If you can get this camera, let, let's just say, let's say you're uh, you're aspiring to to shoot paranormal, and you're just like, man, I want to have a good camera. I want to have a wireless microphone system, and I only have enough memory or money to maybe get like you know three four hundred dollars, whatever. It, look at your budget. If 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 you could only get one thing, that DJI pocket cam or whatever that pocket to whatever it was i'm telling you that's probably what you should get because you could shoot amazing quality um you got the wireless microphone you got the stability so you can you can you, your video is not going to be all jumpy and shaky because it's got that little mini gimbal it's and it works good it it really works good it's highly praised look it up on youtube for the reviews very highly praised so you definitely, I'm telling you, it's a great, great camera. Now, if you already have a DSLR, it's a great add-on, like a partnership, right? So in the future, when Terry Lynn and I do videos together, I'll have my DSLR filming, and she'll have that as well. And we'll be able to use things. Uh, we'll have a lot of tools of filming. So it's it's really awesome. Um, so a couple things to consider is some miscellaneous stuff. And this is important too. A lot of people forget, like we were talking about first aid kits and guns and stuff, right? Sidearms is don't forget about batteries, right? Anytime you have some of these devices, always ask yourself, do I have enough batteries for them? So and the answer usually is no. So the gimbal, for example, that gimbal I showed you the, the, this one, the big gimbal here, it has a 12-hour battery life. However, I guarantee when you get out and you're filming your paranormal investigation, I doubt 
it's going to last the full time. Um, so if you have to, try to invest in extra batteries. Anytime you can buy extra batteries for your equipment, you should. If it requires double A's, triple A's, buy big packs of them whenever you can. You know, I know that batteries cost money sometimes. I know like I'm a budget person, but again, every once in a while, if you get a little extra money, buy a big pack of double A's and, and put them aside properly storm uh, per the directions on the package, but store your batteries, whatever. And if, if it's rechargeable type batteries, have a few of them so you can recharge a couple of them, have them charged up for investigation. That way, if you have any battery drains or lose batteries, that you have multiple backups and also memory. Okay, memory sticks, memory cards, uh, <laughs> any kind of memory, make sure you have memory cards and memory sticks. Now, here's another tip. Check the ratings. Make sure you have good rated memory cards. Okay, there's some memory cards you get. They're just going to be for your run-of-the-mill take-picture camera. Okay, they don't re really require a high or a fast rate. Um, so some of your memory cards, if you're trying to film in high definition or 4K, your memory cards may start to fail and you may have problems with your video, corrupted videos, things like that. So always make sure you check the quality, research and check the quality of your SD cards. Make sure that they are able to record 4K and, and things like that. So make sure you check into that because that's the worst thing you can do is go out and film and have problems. Um, so, for example, one thing I just discovered was one of the memory cards that I use for my Canon DSLR is really good for a lot of the things I do. But when I was using my Tamron lens, my zoom lens, and I was taking some action photography shots and I was shooting at like a, a one one twelve hundredth of a second. Uh, shutter speed um, with continuous shot. So, you know, when you, when you, when you shoot a, a, and you have continuous, you know, a bunch of pictures, um, it was starting to have problems. It, it, it couldn't keep up with the, the amount of pictures I was taking in that fast rate because the memory card just couldn't keep up with it. So it was starting to start to have failures. So remember, always check, your rating of your memory cards. That's another big tip for anybody of all skill levels <laughs> of things. So memory cards, also storage on your computers. Guys, if you know, make sure you have a decent computer or laptop and make sure you have plenty of memory. If you're just using a nice laptop for editing, for, for uh, whenever you go do your investigations, well, you have to download all of that digital media and it adds up memory wise. So make sure you have a large amount of memory on your thing. If not, all right, right here. So this is a hard shell case, okay? And this here, okay, still in the plastic, all right? And this here, I believe is like, what is it, honey? I can't even, I can't even remember right now because, uh, but I believe it's like an eight, is it eight terabyte or six? It's like a six or like an eight terabyte external hard drive. Okay. The reason why I haven't used mine yet is because on my my computer, I have two hard drives. Well, actually, I have three hard drives, but I have two storage hard drives. I have a two terabyte and a four terabyte. So I, I have six terabytes of memory on my computer. And then I've got an additional six or eight terabytes external hard drive as well. So that's extremely important and you can never have enough memory. And actually Terry Lynn hooked me up with that. I hooked you up with everything. So Terry in the studio. Come on the camera. No, no, I'm just kidding. Give me my camera. She doesn't want to be on the give me my camera. What? You're making me nervous. Here's my camera. I'm doing a show. Yes, I know, but we're <laughs> professional like this stuff. So. I know. All right. Yeah, okay, so, time out. There is, uh, now I know what, I asked you a question. I said, why is it getting loud out here? There was nobody down here. There's nobody down here, dude. Something's playing in our. I'm on the TV? Something's playing in that room, and I don't know what it is. <laughs> our son's not came down here. <laughs> hey, there you go. We got paranormal going on in, uh, in our own house. still playing, and I don't know how to turn it off. 
Oh yeah. So um, time him out for just a second. We'll be right back. Just come here. Look at this. Hello. Bring a camera. I don't. I care. can't bring the camera. I can't. All right, hold on. I got to look. I'll be right back. Talk amongst yourself. War of 1812. I don't know. But yeah, I'll be right here. Right here. Doing the live stream. Look. Look. Yeah. Look. 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 Okay. So there you go. So great video, guys. I just leave in the stream. Go check his stuff out. So there you go. <laughs> so basically, something happened that was played. We like was we we were hearing like talking, people talking, and I, I was like, man, something's getting loud. So I went and shut my door. That was earlier when I left, and I shut the door of the studio, and. So, because I thought maybe, you know, my son came downstairs and he was in the other room and he, like, turned on the TV or something or whatever. Or maybe, you know, Terry Lynn had something going on in the living room. But apparently, somehow, something activated the Alexa down in the basement to start some kind of weird story mode or something. I don't know. It was weird, but I got it to stop. So, <laughs> all right, let me check the, the comments. All right, Red Bull is a good battery, right? Eight terabyte. Behind the veil, <laughs> right? So behind the veil, I know, I know. But Terry Lynn will be on camera. She just is not as she's a little more camera shy. But but anyways, uh, let's see, guys. We've been covering a lot. This has been a long stream. I haven't done a long live show in a while. I didn't have to work tonight, my second job. So. I thought this would be the perfect night to do all this. So we covered storage. We covered, okay, like I said, memory. Memory is important, but the right memory. Good memory, uh, external storage, editing, editing software. So, guys, look into some free editing software. If you're new to editing and you don't know how to use an editor, one thing I would recommend is like Corel. Um, C O R E L, right? Cor Corel Video Studio. Um, they they're a good starting point. Like they're a little more user friendly in a way, um, and cost wise, they're not too bad. You might hear a lot of people talk about Adobe Premiere. Um, that's kind of like your professional, or it's it's a good one. It's a good. That's what I use now, but it's not easy. Okay, so I'm constantly have to watch tutorials and research whenever I want to do things. So if editing wise, um, there's a lot of good free ones. There's like DaVinci out there is, I believe, a free one. And a lot of people love that. It's very professional. Um, but there's all kinds of stuff. And like I said, guys, there's all kinds of versions of this stuff. I, I was just trying to show you just some of the stuff we have. I don't know if I've, I didn't show you everything. Obviously, we've got other things. Chargers, don't forget chargers. I mean, there's a lot of aftermarket chargers. Like, for example, I've got um, so for my DSLR camera batteries, I have a single charger that come with the camera, or I believe, but then there's like a dual charger, right? You can get these online where you can charge two camera batteries at the same time. So between that and the single, I can charge three batteries at the same time if I want. Uh, which I really don't ever have to do. I usually just do the two, and I already have two. But I've got like four or five camera batteries, and one battery lasts a really long time with my camera. So I might go through just two on an investigation like all night. But it's good to have that four or five altogether, so those extra two or three on top of that, right? 
So I'm trying to think of some last minute stuff here. Um, Cause if not, I'm definitely going to wrap up the show. It's been a long show. It's been a crazy show. It's been non-professional like we like it. <laughs> I, I hope, I hope you guys like it. Please click share, subscribe guys. I need your support. We've got to keep growing. Um, I'm, I've got a lot of plans coming up. Um, but I believe we did cover just about everything. Oh, uh, cameras. I didn't cover drones. So uh, drones. So this is the DJ, DJ, DJI, just like that little camera, DJI Mav 2 Mini. All right, so this is the Mini 2. All right, DJ, DJI Mini 2. All right, this thing folds up into this little pocket size camera, but the, the footage is awesome. It's amazing. I love it, guys. And comes with the flight joystick. This is extends out for your, your cell phone. That way your cell phone acts as a viewing screen, but it's, it's kind of like your function part of it, right? Like this is where you'll use buttons and all kinds of stuff on the screen. But and but your it plugs into your phone. There's like a little cable right here that plugs in your phone. Um, there's also little joysticks that pop out of the bottom and screw into your for your joysticks. But yeah, it's it's awesome. This comes with three batteries. Now you can get the mini two um, without the extra batteries. There's like without some of the extras. But I recommend if you're going to invest in a drone, get the combo pack because you get those extra batteries. You get the extra little few things. Uh, Mom said also cover the sign. Yes, very good. So, as a, I had a messenger, so Terry Lynn sent Christian down here to remind me of the psionics. So much stuff, guys. I told you. <laughs> so much stuff. So, the psionics camera. Now, I have used this, if you guys have watched um, some of my last few investigations, uh, name it like the Nickerson Sneed, things like that. Uh, this psionics here can shoot, uh, when you go outside, you can actually shoot color night vision. Um, or you can do your standard gray or even your green looking night vision, all with this psionics. This is a very expensive night vision, though, but this is very good. Very good night vision camera. Okay. Obviously, it's monocular there. Um, doesn't really have a flip out view screen. Very small view. You can use a cell phone. You can you can Bluetooth up your cell phone for like a, a viewing screen. But in all honesty, guys, I will you can you can actually mount this. I'm sorry, it's, it's actually like this, but this you can actually mount on the bottom here. You can mount this on a little pistol grip tripod. Or, or switch pod, whatever, you can actually mount this, walk around, and film your night vision with this. Again, if you can't afford psionics, that is a good step up. If you can't afford it, and it shoots 720, by the way, night vision. But if you can't, then, like I said, get one of the, the other China cams that work really well as well for night vision. But this, this is like your really good night vision stuff and your 720 uh, night vision. Um, so I think that might be it. I don't know. If there's anything I forgot, I'm sure Terry Lynn will remind me or you guys. You guys can always let me know in the comments if you have other things that, again, and when it comes to equipment, there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, you can get millimeters, um, you know, uh, God, there's so many detectors out there, little ghost like motion balls. All kinds of stuff, guys. That's why I said I'm not going to get into, like, each and all that stuff. I just wanted to show you guys, again, what we are using. Um, just give you some tips and tricks and some things that I didn't always think about or forget about. Water. Take a cooler. You know, make sure you have a cooler. Have some water. Have some snacks. Because when you get on investigation, again, it's easy to get dehydrated. And the worst thing is you don't want to be in the middle of an investigation and start really feeling like crap. And if you get dehydrated and you start feeling bad, 
you know, your guard's going to drop. Spirits are going to be able to invade or attack you. So keep hydrated, you know, have a snack or something, uh, you know, but keep a cooler. These are all little things that to keep in mind when you go do these investigations. All right, let me check the comments. All right, so sorry, honey, I'm afraid of the drone. I let Josh do that. Oh, wait, oh my God, do you have a care plan? Had the record on the first day. It takes me three hours to put in new batteries, recharge other gear before an investigation. Adobe After Effects. Yeah, and like Adobe After Effects. That's like, so when you guys, if you guys ever want to get into editing and you go to like Adobe and you're going to see like all kinds of programs, like Lightroom, Photoshop, uh, uh, Premiere Pro, um, or Premiere, uh, After Effects. You're going to see all these different things. Don't be intimidated by all that. You just have to research and find what's going to work for you. Like certain things are for certain uh, specific things. Like if you want just photography, you might just have like Photoshop and Lightroom because those are the ones that you're going to use to go in for still photography, things like that, where like St uh, Stacy brought up After Effects. So After Effects is where you can mask things. You can do other graphic type stuff. It's kind of like your next level of, of effects for editing. So you can just use Premiere and do a lot of like graph, like text and fades and transitions. And you can do all kinds of editing stuff with Premiere. It's great. But the After Effects allows you to do all those really cool Hollywood style type stuff where you can add effects. Um, and like I said, mask things out. You can track things. There's all kinds of cool, cool things you can do with After Effects. Um, so, but I just wanted to kind of clarify that since he did bring that up in the comments. Um, <laughs> yes, the drone. Um, yeah, the drones, again, just when it comes to drones, take your time. They fly themselves almost. It's, but at the same time, it's really easy to, to just take off and maybe run into something. So just take it easy. Use subtle movements. And if your drone, like, so for example, my drone has three modes. It has like Cinna, what's called Cinna, and then Norm and Sport. Well, Cinna is cinematic, right? If you, if you select cinematic, what's nice about that is kind of also is sort of a beginner mode in a way it, your drone will still fly at a good pace, but it's not going to fly as fast as like maybe sport mode or normal mode. So you know, if you have a cinema mode, select that when you're just starting out and then take your time. Like it, again, you don't have to be a pro whipping around and whizzing around. A lot of your great shots are gentle, easy movements anyways. And also, mine has some modes that you can select. It will automatically do some movements for you. But again, you want to make sure that you're clear. Um, you also have some automatic returns, automatic landings. Um, you just have to make sure you, you watch tutorials and read your directions for your specific model. Um, but other than that, drones aren't too bad. They're pretty fun in a way. You just got to take your time. Just don't get crazy. Um, that's when you start having accidents is when you start wanting to get crazy, you don't want to wreck it. And yes, we have a care plan. <laughs> so, uh, for, especially for the drone. Um, but I think that's it. I think we covered a lot of things. I really hope you guys enjoyed the advice and the, the, the gear. There's so much gear, uh, oh, so much stuff, but it's worth it. It really is. Once you start a lot of it. Now, keep in mind, a lot of it that I have, I have a lot of extra gear because I do filming. Okay. And some of it I've had to get recently because I'm trying to film a series for a, a, a platform, a streaming service. So, you know, I have to kind of go that extra step. Um, if you're just out and you're doing paranormal investigations, um, you know, again, it's all going to be on what you need. So keep that in mind. Um, I, I do look at a difference between ghost hunting and paranormal investigations. I consider ghost hunting is when I go ghost hunting when I just want to go to a building and, you know, an abandoned building, 
a cemetery or whatever and go look for ghosts. To me, that's just ghost hunting. You know, I do maybe a few little experiments, dowsing rods, film, maybe do some audio recording. You know, nothing major. Um, but when I have a case or if I go to a place that I really want to investigate, that's when I'm considering myself a paranormal investigator. And that's when I go there and I take it a little more serious when it comes to the, the experiments and taking a, a variety of experiments and really trying to capture evidence and document that evidence. And I'm not so much always worried about filming, like angles, lighting. As long as we can pretty much see what's going on and you can document stuff, there you go. But if you're, if you're like me and you want to do more stuff on YouTube or you want to share with people, then you're going to want to try to get it looking halfway decent and try to get your lighting. And so that's why I wanted to recommend and show you guys some of the things that I've found that didn't quite break the bank, but were things that work really well and they're very effective. Um, and even an older camera like this Canon 77D, this thing is great. I mean, you know, you can buy different lenses for it. And because sometimes people too, they say, well, Josh, I, I can't, I don't want to film any YouTube videos or I don't want to film any, any, um, any videos because I don't have the equipment. I don't have the, the nice cameras and stuff. And trust me, anytime you watch any videos on cinematography and filmmaking, they all will end up telling you it's not about the equipment. It's, you know, if you just have a camera, you can film anything. Pretty much, it doesn't even have to be a great a great camera, you know. So there's been some great short films made on vi like iPhones and, or even camera phones or just basic video cameras, you know. It's just, you know, you might have to work a little harder at trying to keep it steady or trying to light something up or, you know, there's extra little things you might have to do. But if you want to film it, go out and film it. There's nothing really holding you back. And I had to kind of get out of that mentality myself because when I first started getting into it, I'm like, oh, my God, I need this. I need that. I need, I need, need, need. I really need all these things. And then I realized I didn't really need all of that. I could get away with certain things. Now, when I'm like, hey, honey, <laughs> I need this. It's like usually at that point, it's like this is kind of what I do need, you know, what I'd like to have. But as long as you have that camera, you can go out and shoot all, all kinds of stuff. So I hope you enjoyed everything. I hope you enjoyed tonight. Uh, I know it's a long video. Um, I hope for some of you that watch this, I hope you do get something out of everything we talked about tonight. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always message me uh, um, or email me at everythingparanormalshow at gmail.com. And, uh, and you can ask me. And I'm more than happy to, to give you that answer. So in the meantime, guys, it's been great. Let me look, check the comments real quick. 95% investigator and 5% ghost hunter. Well, yeah, and it's like whatever it's like whatever you want to be. Like I honestly, I don't really set myself any kind of percentage because there's just sometimes like in some of my videos, I'm just out ghost hunting. I'm just out filming and having fun. I don't really I'm not stressed about being scientific if that makes sense. And then there's times when when it matters if it's people involved and things like that. Then my investigator hat comes on, and then I'm more trying to figure things out. I'm really trying to capture and be scientific about it if I can. You know, I'm really trying to get to the bottom of stuff. You know, it just depends on the situation. So, uh, but guys, that's it, man. If you guys have any questions, like I said, give me a shout. Uh, anyways, I've had fun. We'll see you in the next. Uh, we'll see you next week. Remember, seek the truth. <laughs> I gotta end it. And I click on it. Now I'm standing up, so it's kind of awkward. <laughs>